Welcome into the Five on Your Side Digital Five Plus Studios. Thanks for joining us wherever you stream Five Plus on Amazon, Roku, coming soon to Apple TV, uh, YouTube, all over the internet. You can't shake us. Uh, that's right. I'm Mark <laughs> Maxwell. She's Anita Mannion. We are watching results come in across St. Louis City, the county, in some of the local races in Illinois. And we're still looking for some of these results to start posting. If you're following along, you can also see these results on the bottom of your screen there. A lot of these are absentee ballots, so people that sent those in ahead of time, those are starting to populate. As soon as the election officials have ballots counted and post them and report them, we will have them for you here, checking in with you about every half hour. Anita, we were just talking a moment ago about, uh, the, and this is always interesting to watch the way movements change and shift and which type of voters are showing up at the polls. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's quite a sustained effort to really capture and rally a lot of that energy we saw around school boards during the pandemic and push that forward into some new political movement. What do you see there and how could that push impact? There's, there's school board races to watch tonight, but uh, just politics in general, how do you see that shaping these races? Yeah, I would say it definitely is shaping the races. School boards in the last year or two have become a very contentious and politicized issue where it used to be sort of a service that people did to their communities. But it's not the first time we've seen that. Um, if you look back to when school segregation, desegregation was happening, there was a big backlash and that was part of the sort of uh, cultural war movement as well. And so we're kind of seeing a repeat of that. It got sparked during the pandemic, but now it's moving on to other issues like gender issues, book banning, other things to really energize voters. Is it just as simple as saying uh, kids went home spent a lot more time around parents. Parents had to help out with the homework and they were like, wait a minute, what's the, I don't remember this coursework. Is, it, is that the easiest explanation or are, are there other, you think, uh, contributing factors? I think that's one component, but I think there's a lot of contributing factors. Um, I think, you know, it really paired in with the mask mandates and when schools were shut down and parents were very frustrated with trying to homeschool their kids. And it was interesting because for a while during the pandemic, we really saw folks rallying around teachers and schools because they had an appreciation for all they were providing for their kids. But then that sort of shifted mm -hmm. and, um, you know, really being critical of teachers, librarians, school policies, and really thinking that parents should be more empowered in their children's education. We always learn a lot about the electorate and the direction of voters, how voters are thinking during these municipal local elections. One race that you're not going to see on the bottom of your screen, but one that we're watching in the political world because it could portend uh, things for the future of St. Louis politics is the mayoral race in Chicago tonight. The reason we start talking about these school board races is because there you have a teachers union member in Brandon Johnson, very progressive uh, left wing Democrat against Paul Vallis, a moderate centrist, if not even Republican leaning, who really flirted with a lot of those school board races and those people that uh, during the pandemic were very critical of lockdowns. He built a base there and he's uh, he's got some powerful name recognition from big Democrats who backed him, but he kind of needed them yeah. to remind people he was not a Republican. In, in the city of Chicago, you have this white centrist guy who could come in and win this race. Right now, it's about a thousand votes separating the two yeah. of them. Pretty tight race there. Yeah, I think it's closer at this point than most people expected. Um, and this, I think, does hearken to in low turnout elections, if you can get a really energized electorate, whether it's around school issues or crime, that you can really make a big impact. If you're watching tonight, we're going to learn the fate of the marijuana taxes. If you live in the county, you could see a local sales tax from your city if you authorize that vote there, if it gets 50% support or higher. Also, you could see another 3% tax from the county if that separate ballot question is also answered with 50% or more of the support there. Plus, we're watching in the city of St. Louis to see if a new charter commission could be seated in 2024 and every 10 years thereafter to update and modernize the city's guiding document. Before we uh, go to a break here and check in to see how some of these results are uh, evolving, uh, how bad of a defeat would it be for Mayor Jones if her endorsed candidate, Tashara Earl, loses against Sharon Tyus, her big critic in the north part of uh, the 12th Ward tonight? I think that's probably the race that both Mayor Jones and President Green are most focused on, but there's a couple that really will determine the tipping point of that Board of Aldermen. Mm -hmm. We're going to be watching that race also, uh, a few other close races. When we check in with you at 8.30 in about 25 minutes, we expect to have a lot more results. We'll see you there. In the meantime, you can stay plugged into KSDK.com slash